Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a quick look at this despicable switch. This is the one that came out of that uh, extension lead which was uh, previously uh, melted and destroyed. And of course we took this out because the wires literally just fell off before we managed to use the thing. So uh, might as well just have a look at this and uh, see how appallingly badly it's constructed inside. So here is the uh, despicable switch from that uh, awful extension lead. And uh, I originally said in the other video that it didn't have any markings on, but uh, actually it does. So they couldn't be seen due to the way it was fitted in the case. But uh, it doesn't really say much. It says 16 amps, 250 volts AC, 1A, 2B, and the letter J. And uh, that's it. So there we go. And then on the other side, well, it's basically the exact same thing again. So uh, again, no uh, real information there. It's just a snap-in type thing. You'll shove it in the hole and these tabs just uh, pop out and retain it in a panel of a certain thickness. And then on the top here, we've got the various wires, of course, one of which uh, literally just ripped off. I did attempt to uh, solder here, but it proved to be next to impossible. And uh, what we've got here basically is a single pole switch. So these are the switch contacts here. And that's where one of them busted off. And then this over here is a neutral connection for whatever indicator is contained inside. So it's basically line in, line out. And then, of course, you're uh, neutral there, so the thing illuminates. Now, if you actually move the switch on this and watch that wire, you'll see that as the switch moves, so does the wire on the uh, back there. So, uh, pretty poor quality item. And notice there's no actual terminal here, it's just literally a wire coming out of a slot. So, uh, so there you go. Nothing of any quality in that. Again, this wire's horribly thin, doesn't matter too much for this, there's only the equipment for the little lamp in there, but uh, as we saw, the actual wires themselves are also very thin here, that's supposed to be carrying your 16 amp load, so uh, pretty obviously uh, not going to happen. So let's dig into this and see what mess is contained inside. Now as I'm just cutting into this switch here, you can tell that the plastic is of a very soft and uh, very sort of thermoplastic variety, as in when it gets hot it melts and falls to pieces, which is pretty much uh, what the rest of the thing did before. So. Certainly not made of anything uh, useful. Doubtful if it's flame retardant. Uh, not actually going to bother testing this because we've already done uh, plenty of testing on the thing before. And as we saw in the previous video, that was not uh, flame retardant in the slightest. So now we've sort of hacked into the side, we can uh, basically just remove the contents and see what mess is contained in there. So uh, we've got there basically the uh, lid there, a little resistor, which is obviously just to limit the current to whatever is in there to illuminate. And then the switch contact is basically formed by this spring here, which is moderately uh, substantial. And then down in the bottom there we can see the actual contact. So there is the switch contact, so when it's in the on position all of the load current is going to be going through this piece of whatever it is. And then it just literally presses across the two terminals here. And of course in the off position it's just pivoting uh, so from there it's just pivoting up slightly so it doesn't actually uh, make a connection between the two. So very, very flimsy in the bottom there. And of course this thing itself, very flimsy as well. Now of course the usual uh, check here, what's it made of? Is it made of some kind of ferrous? Well yes, obviously it is. So it's basically just a chunk of uh, pressed steel of some sort. Doubtful that's going to carry 16 amps. What about the terminals in the bottom? Well, yes, they're kind kind of ferrous steel or metal as well. Even though they may be brass coloured, they're definitely not made of brass. What's this wire made of? That might be copper, I suppose. Or, oh, of course, it could be uh, copper clad aluminium. So, uh, very, very poor quality. And certainly no way that would have carried 16 amps or anything like. I mean, even this piece itself would have just uh, overheated and melted. And um, because this is the uh, bendy and uh, melty thermoplastic material, any excess heat here, they're going to shift out of position and of course simply not make contact anymore. So here we have, say, a little resistor there and a spring, so hoik that out of there, see what we've got in the top. And the indicator in this case is apparently a neon lamp. Just a little uh, bulb thing there. Let's see if we can just cut that out of there. Yeah, so it's just a neon bulb there, the two electrodes inside, a small amount of uh, neon gas resistor to limit the current there. And of course that's the wire that went outside to the uh, neutral connection. And then the line is actually uh, coming across here, and that's where the spring fitted. So it would simply connect onto the uh, thing when the switch was in the on position. So that's going to glow a sort of a dullish orange. 
and then be even duller after it's gone through the red plastic lens here. And in terms of quality, the red plastic lens is probably the best quality part of the entire thing, uh, the rest of it uh, being a complete pile of junk. So uh, there we go, and of course no manufacturer's name on this thing. Doubtful anybody would want to be uh, putting their name to that. And we can see that it's, uh, yeah, you can literally tear the plastic apart into that pore. So uh, that's what's inside the world's cheapest and nastiest uh, illuminated switch. Certainly not suitable with application anyway, because it's only a single pole, and uh, even if it was, say, it's not going to last more than five minutes, the blue effect's going to melt and disintegrate. So uh, that's it for this time. Until next time, thanks for watching.